Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where we show you the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building throughout this last week, roughly, in LEGO. Links to all of the designers are in the description below if you want to see more of their content, which I highly, highly recommend you do. There's a lot of extras included as always because 10 is a relatively limited number compared to all the amazing stuff people are producing every day in LEGO throughout the world. This week's custom LEGO build Build that went up in our mock instructions web store is the doof wagon from Nicola and it joins the much larger Mad Max collection of the slightly upscaled vehicles from this desolate desert scape wasteland world this one by far I think is the most flashy and the design of the doof wagon itself is a bit more fantastical I would say compared to some of the other vehicles click the link in the description below if you want to check out our web store any and all support from you guys is highly appreciated from y'all on the channel so so if you want to like or subscribe, comment, do whatever you want to do, please feel free. Now let's jump into the very first build of the week. My roommate was just playing Breath of the Wild like all weekend. So this is like fresh in my head. Uh, this is from Speedyhead, Hyrule Castle Town Ruins. I think this is one of the first places you can see in the game when you first start out. And the build detailing that you see here for both the ruins and the landscape around looks pretty darn good. I like the brick building technique for the larger wall of the castle and the techniques used for the ruins of the house look relatively simple but it's really effective and the dynamic levels of the studded ground make the world feel very organic number two is a digital build not everybody's a big fan of digital i don't mind from gun building we have the adventurers console room personally i don't know the adventurers storyline but i found this to be a pretty interesting uh and kind of fun looking area you can see a series of different weapons and perhaps artifacts up on the walls a nice custom build for a motorcycle, a few other gizmos and gadgets, and on the inside, the very center, you can see the control panels for what looks like a much larger hot air balloon, and maybe this whole area is connected by a big balloon and it can travel around. That's just what I pick up from this. Fun little details for sure. And then if you wanted a wonderful dose of cuteness to the week, Lego Truman's Instagram has a lot of really fun Brickheads inspired animal builds. It's hard to say which ones I think are my favorite. Personally, I think he did a great job with the hedgehog. I'm a big fan of the barn owl and those curved slope pieces look really nice for the face. And then outside of that, I don't know, maybe the elephant or giraffe are uh, among my favorites as well. Perhaps the monkey, I don't know, there's a lot. You should check out all of them. I don't know how many are uh, able to build in real life because some of those colors might not exist in those proper uh, pieces, but my guess is that a good chunk probably could be built in real life. Now switching tones 100%, very, very dark themed build. We have the Arkham Asylum from Luby, and not only is it a wonderful uh, front courtyard of the very ominous looking building for Arkham Asylum and the kind of overgrown garden and uh, dark and foreboding front gate, but it's actually an event. It looks like the asylum is taking in a new prisoner, a very, very dangerous one. It's mysterious, we don't know who, but my guess is that it would be somebody of the caliber, like Joker or Bane or perhaps Killer Croc, we don't really know. And anyways, uh, it's just a wonderful combination of dark, overgrown organic matter combined with a, a really, really creepy looking building. And of course, it's in the universe of Batman, so plus, plus, plus. Next up is from Corvus Ariac Mox. And this is a scene built as part of a competition that had to do with the latest minifigure series 19. So included is the Fright Knight and the Shower Guy. <laughs> and what we have here is this Fright Knight, this ghost-like knight, popping through a uh, some type of portal and scaring the bejesus out of shower guy a lot here is communicated in the build which i really like it's very small not too many parts were used but still the detail is very much there like the lord of the rings ring used to tie off the curtain or the handcuff pieces that just kind of make that ornate detailing around the figures also some of the digital rendering used to light this uh, just makes this thing really pop and now we are looking at a very very large diorama built by hellboy lego it's called starlight theater or this is the overview of it and it's based on uh, uh, Fallout 4. I have this theory that making a post-apocalyptic build in LEGO is one of the more difficult and also fun things to do 
do with the medium just because you have a combination of playing around with proper architecture designs for some of the buildings. Then there's the challenge of making more organic or biome uh, related nature builds combined with kind of a fun scattering of whatever the heck you like because the world has uh, completely decomposed. Here I think there's a great combination of techniques put to good use. Particularly I like the way the buildings have actually deteriorated and you can see the walls kind of coming apart and their support beams kind of sticking out in certain places or certain areas of the theater have broken away while you can see some of the larger uh, stronger structure areas that are kind of still sticking in there. It's a really realistic way to break down a structure and it looks great with the Lego building here and there's just a lot of details to get lost in. I highly recommend you take a closer look at this one for sure and then believe it or not this isn't the only build here. The Blacktron Harvester that is a throwback to an earlier time at least when it comes to the color combination. From Z Cerberus this giant ominous uh, incredibly stylistic Lego robot spider seems to have taken a stance on a moon-like surface. The mini spiders also have a really wonderful building technique to them. I can't tell if this is a mechanical thing where those would eventually grow into a larger spider or if they're just kind of the robotic little helpers that kind of fight maybe smaller space people on the ground. But either way, this large creepy spiky footed uh, build would be an amazing large scale set if they ever wanted to come back to redoing some of those classic space themes for official Lego sets. There's also a little bit of lighting here, which is cool. It's kind of hard to see. And then from Chris Perron, we have Shark Timber Mega Shark Scout. I believe this color combination uh, matches up from Space Police 3 or something very similar to it. You can see there's some Nexo Knight pieces used in here to uh, accentuate those orange highlights. And I love the use of those pieces that make up the teeth. In general, we have a wonderful build for the shape of a shark body. Those two sub assemblies in the back made of mostly blue slope pieces have a great way of making the shark look like it is getting more narrow towards the tail, but it's also quite rigid and mechanical, which clearly draws the boundary between machine and organic creature, which this thing looks like completely machine, just it's meant to look, of course, like a giant shark. I just can't get over the striking look of the color combination, even though it is kind of a throwback to a classic theme. I feel like it also just works quite well. Now we're going to jump into a lot of tan. This is a Harry Potter build called the Hogwarts Magical Staircase. So you can see that you're on the inside of Hogwarts. It's a rather large, I would say probably minifig scale diorama, where on the inside of these huge towers there was just tapestry after tapestry, painting after painting, that of course was magical and would come alive. So you can see that they're built back into the wall and you can see minifigure heads and torsos and and little portraits and things like that because these minifigures would actually, or sorry, the figures in the painting from this universe would actually come alive and they'd be moving around a little bit all the time. Jonas Cram, the designer, did an excellent job putting this together. And if you check out his Instagram, you can see the video he made with the crank lever there that you see at the bottom. And then this build makes a whole heck of a lot more sense with uh, those minifigure pieces. A lot of this stuff actually moves around. It's an incredibly impressive bit of building. I probably put this one as my number one recommended. Please check this out in the description below. And then for the last build of the week, I saved the largest, which I don't normally do, but here it is. These are the Dunes of Levant by Dorn B. Well, the pictures I found are from Dorn B, but it was built by 13 contributors from the Swiss Lug. Once again, if you check this out in the description below, you can see the full list of everybody that uh, added to this massive, massive diorama. One of the largest ones I've seen in a while. And there's a wonderful combination of different biomes and environments that this huge space gets to cover. We have the ocean, almost an oasis-like area with a little bit more greenery and vegetation, while then you have a small city area. Looks like the buildings are relatively uh, weather beaten and then some much larger walls and forts and wonderful builds for towers and a more open desert scape on the other side. It's really hard to focus specifically on tiny little pieces here, but the building techniques are wonderful. Closer inspection reveals some very nice little tiny details and as a single piece for a much larger area, like if you were viewing this uh, in a convention or something, there's a lot of different areas to really focus on instead of maybe looking at one giant desert scape or one giant cityscape, you have a bit of everything. The designers that put this all together should be very proud of themselves. This is an awesome, awesome massive diorama. And that is going to be it for the top 10 mocks of the week. Let me know what 
you guys think in the comments below. Remember to check out the links in the description below. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah.